If you wish to follow along with the Liturgy of the Word, it can be found on page 998. That is 998 in your hymnals. Our opening song will be Abide With Us, Emmanuel. You can follow along with the refrain on the half sheets on the ends of your pews. We will sing a refrain, the choir will sing two verses, and then you'll join us in a refrain again. Please stand. Good morning. Good morning. Once again this week we invite a parish family to light the Advent candle for this week. Today we have with us Dan and Leslie, Elise and Tyler and Sidney Weimer. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom a light has shone. Today, we light the candle of joy. The Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to announce a year of favor from the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us this third Sunday of Advent. In a very special way, we want to welcome any visitors who are here, and also those who are watching us live streamed or will watch us record it later in the day. 
Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. <coughs> My dear children, today you will learn about waiting and preparing for Jesus. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we ask you to look with love upon your children gathered here. As we prepare for Christmas, help them to understand what it means to wait and prepare for the coming of Jesus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you may go to children's liturgy. to the word of God. God has the words of everlasting life. God has the words of A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. He has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Our response to the psalm will be, my soul rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices, rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices, rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices in my God, my 
of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices, rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in And the rich he hath sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices, rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from evil, kind, every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. He 
sent me to bring good news to the poor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Today is commonly called Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is a Latin word that means rejoice. Instead of violet vestments, today priests wear rose vestments. Instead of a violet Advent candle, today we lift the rose candle. This Sunday takes its name from the traditional entrance antiphon, which comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. The Lord is near. We rejoice today because we are now at the midpoint of Advent. Christmas is almost here. In today's Gospel, John's mission becomes very clear. According to the prologue of John's Gospel, John the Baptist came to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He takes as his mission statement the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. His answers to the people's questions clearly manifest him as the precursor as he tells them he is not the Christ, Elijah, or the prophet. This reading suggests some practical implications for our lives. John the Baptist knew who he was and who he was not, what he was, and what he was not. I remember reading one time that, the, that two big temptations we face is trying to be more than human or less than human, rather than becoming the best version of ourselves. Also note, John the Baptist recognized and defined his vocation from Scripture. He knew his vocation came from God. Like John, we need to seek our vocation in God. Instead of always asking, what do I want to do with my life? Or what do I want to do next in my life? We might better ask what God is calling me to do. Third, we too are called to witness to the light. As Jesus told us, you are the light of the world. Your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Like John, we're challenged to point to someone else, to point to Christ. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus chooses the first part of today's first reading as his mission statement. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. 
He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. What I find fascinating about Jesus' quotation of the quote in the abs is the absence of the phrase, to heal the brokenhearted. I think I once read that Jesus omitted that phrase because it was less about what he did and more about who he was as healer, reconciler, and peacemaker. However, the phrase has relevance for us. We all know so many people who are brokenhearted for all kinds of reasons. One of the primary reasons for brokenheartedness is loss. We all know people who have suffered great losses in their lives. We ourselves have all suffered losses. We help heal the brokenhearted by being present for them, by listening attentively to them, and by being compassionate, that is sensitive to their real needs, both spoken and unspoken, and then responsive to those needs. We can become healers of their hearts. My brothers and sisters, today's second reading struck me in a way it never has before. We often complicate the Christian life. Paul tells us in very simple terms today how to live as Christians and therefore as witnesses to the light. He tells us to rejoice always. Those who, are, who rejoice always give powerful witness to Christ and the power of his resurrection. We are to pray without ceasing and to give thanks in all circumstances. We are to allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit. We are to refrain from every kind of evil. So simple, yet so hard. Perhaps this is why Paul writes, may the God of peace make you perfectly holy. In other words, even if we do everything right, we're not able to make ourselves holy. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess what baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray this Advent <coughs> for joy and hope in the coming Lord. <coughs> our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, and all priests during this Advent season, may Christ's love strengthen them as they lead us all in preparing for the coming of Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, may we become dedicated to peace and justice for the entire world. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those experiencing despair and need, especially during this season of hope and giving, may they be blessed by the generosity of others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, that the hope that fills their hearts this season may become firmly planted within them and sustain them throughout life's journey. We pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose faith has grown cold, that God will stir up the flame of faith, help them to turn toward God, and help us to welcome them warmly into our faith community. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Vincent Tucher, for whom this Mass is offered, may they be united with the Father and rejoice in eternal life. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we now recall in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, ever faithful to your promises, and ever close to us, the earth rejoices in hope of the Savior's coming and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts and remove the sadness that hinders us from feeling the joy and hope which his presence will bestow, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Gift bears this morning are members of the Davis family.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer, you, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be, ple be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have, you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, God. Peace, my Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Eucharistic ministers, there are still some slots open at Christmas masses to serve, especially the 9.30 a.m. mass. If you are going to be attending mass at Little Flower, please consider signing up. Thank you. Advent reflection books are still available at all the doors. Please take one home to pray with your family. The readings in the book can be used as your family lights the Advent wreath or for personal prayer. The study of the Gospel of Mark is starting the week of January 8th. You are invited to learn, enjoy, and clo grow closer to Jesus. Will this be your New Year's resolution? Get your flyer with all the details at any church entrance. Coffee and donuts will be available after Mass in the school cafeteria. Next weekend, we'll be celebrating both the fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas. The church asks us all to attend two Masses. We all are supposed to attend Mass for the fourth Sunday of Advent. We're all supposed to attend Mass for Christmas. For the fourth Sunday of Advent, there will only be two Masses. Five o'clock on Saturday, our normal five o'clock Mass, and then 9.30 on Sunday morning. Beginning Sunday afternoon will be Christmas Masses. They will be at 4, 5.30, and 10 p.m. with a musical prelude beginning at 9.30 on, on evening, 9.30 p.m., Christ, uh, Christmas Eve night. And then, of course, on Christmas Day, there will only be one Mass, and that will be at 9.30 a.m. One of our traditions here at Little Flower, besides our Advent lighting tradition, is the tradition of blessing expected parents during Advent. So if we have any expected parents here, we would ask you to start coming forward at this time. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Over this world, millions of parents are waiting for infants to be born. Each child is a miracle from God like no other. It is our tradition to celebrate God's goodness and support all the parents-to-be with a blessing during Advent. We ask God's blessing on all expected parents around the world, but especially here in our own parish. And here today we have with us Aaron and Patrick and Jonah Becker, and Aaron is pregnant with twins. God, the Lord of life, by his will brings every human being into existence, and he rules and sustains the life of every one of us. Such is God's great love for each of us that through the sacrament of baptism we receive a sharing in the divine life itself. We bless parents-to-be so that they may await the hour of delivery in faith and hope, and as partners of God's own love, may already cherish with parental love the children in the womb. The Lord be with you. With your Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. I invite all of you to extend your hands in blessing over Patrick and Aaron and uh, Jonah. Gracious Father, your word, spoken in love, created the human family. And in the fullness of time, Jesus, your son, conceived in love and born of a woman, restored it to your friendship. Receive with kindness the prayer of your servants, Aaron and Patrick, as they ask for the birth of a healthy child. Grant that they may safely deliver their children to be numbered among your family, to serve you in all things, and to gain eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's give them a hand. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.
Please join us in singing our closing hymn, 397. That is Maranatha, Lord Messiah. 397, we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 7. <laughs> 